Hi everyone, it's Andrea, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be a sort of what I've been up to this weekend, or this last week reading, what I've watched, what I've listened to. So, what I've listened to is this lovely box set of Judy Garland, the Judy Garland the one and only. It came out in 1991, so it's 29 years old. I remember when it came out, but I was a student, so I didn't have that kind of money. It was like 40, 50 quid, if I remember rightly. So I managed to get this copy from eBay. Um, I've listened to the disc one and two, and it's absolutely fantastic. There are three discs in the studio, uh, at the Footlights, and then the London Sessions. So this is Capitol Records, and it's absolutely fantastic to listen to. Really like it. For once, I managed to sit down and watch a couple of films. Now, having a two-year-old, most of what we watch is children's TV so she loves things like Andy's Dinosaur Adventures and Waffle which is fine she's a youngster she enjoys it so last night uh, Paul was she was in bed Paul was having a, a drink zoom meeting with his buddy so I came up and watched a couple of films the first one I watched I haven't got the case for because the dog chewed it but it's just, I've got another copy Gentleman for Blondes with Mary Monroe and Jane Russell I have several copies of this including the blu-ray this is a copy that lives up here in the room because this is the normal DVD from the Diamond Collection. I love this film, it's my favourite film. I used to watch this film every day, I've probably watched it near enough 30 or 40,000 times I'm, and I'm not joking, I have watched it that much. Oh, it's still my favourite Marilyn film. The reason I wanted to watch it is um, one of the Marilyn girls posted on uh, Marilyn Remembered on Facebook The 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 Jane Russell song, After You Get What You Want, You Don't Want It, is actually a lot longer uh, on one of the CDs we've got. And the CD is the Diamond Collection. I have got it and I did listen to it, but it's downstairs. Um, and it's a lot longer. There's an extra verse and chorus where she sings with three other girls and that part of it was cut. Um, and somebody found some photographs on one of the Jane Russell websites and posted them to me. I remembered it was really interesting because one of the girls is wearing a costume that would be filmed, featured later in How to Marry a Millionaire, which would come later 1953, and uh, is one that's uh, featured in the fashion show, and it's called the Palm Beach Stroller. And you can actually see uh, the the girl wearing this costume in the finished uh, production of Jump Blonde. She just doesn't get to sing the part she was supposed to. Um, they cut that back, back bit out, but you can see her in the crowds and hanging around the pool where they do the Ain't There Anyone Here For Love. Um, thing which was really good and the second film is one I loved when I was a lot younger and that's uh, The Thrill of It All which is James Garner and Doris Day excuse the price tag on it I never take them off anymore um, bought this second hand in Newport at a place called Troutmark from the Indoor Market it's probably not going to be there much longer because they're going to be refurbing um, and if it's anything like the last refurbishment they did at the Indoor Centre it'll kill it dead because last time they've, they've refitted they refitted the upstairs galleries where Troutmark used to be Based and he had whole, pretty much the whole length of the building on one side was just him. Um, of course, in those days he sold a lot of records as well. I bought my first Judy album from there. Um, and then when he renovated it, he moved downstairs and they were having the galleries with cafes and there was a seating area and um, all these little artisan shops. And do you know what? They don't use it. It's not used. It's used every now and again now for things like the record fair or something like that and the flea market. So if it's anything like that, it'll just die in the water. I hope it doesn't because I love Newport Market and I'd love to see it be a success, but I don't know. So the thrill of it all, uh, this one tells the story of um, Beverly Boyer, Doris Day, and her husband, uh, whose name I can't remember, Dr. Boyer. He's a surgeon, Mr. Boyer would be. He's a, a gynecologist, obstetrician. Um, and one of his clients gets pregnant and is very happy and um, they invite him and his wife Beverly to dinner and they, they go to dinner and the woman's father owns a brand of soap called Happy Soap and Beverly's just used this on her daughter's hair because her daughter didn't want to to use the normal shampoo because she said it makes her smell ooky like the cracks in the playground she wants happy soap so she smells like her piano teacher so Beverly does that and she makes a comment about that at dinner and the old man the, the main the old guy that owns the company likes her refreshing outlook likes the fact that she's just so natural and down to earth that he wants her to become the new happy soap girl and so she starts um advertising on their playhouse hour um just doing the, the commercial um husband is not happy about that at all 
obviously this is the 1960s he wants a wife to stay at home and look after him and the kids um, which he was happy to do until this offer came around because it was a very lot of money not that they needed it but still and she does actually quite in enjoy it however things come to a head and he really doesn't want her um, doing it anymore because she's recognised in public, they can't go out for a meal, you know, and all that. And the, the final straw is really when um, the old man says, get her a pool, because they want her to demonstrate the studs, the, the pool cleaner, and she hasn't got a pool, so she can't do it. Um, so they build a pool in her back garden in, a, in the course of a day, and James Garner's character doesn't realise, doesn't know it's there. And he goes to put the car in the garage, and he drives the car into the pool. And then he's so angry with her that he kicks all the um, soap boxes into the pool and then he storms off and goes to stay at his office or something. And uh, it rains and then the next day the, the, the garden's full of, of soap or suds uh, and then they hire somebody to come and get it and they, there's this... It's quite funny that bit. But in the end, obviously, she gives up doing it because having a baby is the most important thing in the world and she's going to have another one. So it's a very dated film. It is. It's sweet and it's charming and there's some genuinely laugh out loud funny moments. And Doris Day is amazing. But the whole the wife stays at home and looks after the kids thing, it is very, very dated from that point. It's very sexist from that point of view. But it's a charming look back to what times were like back in the 60s and she was one of the lucky ones because she didn't have to work she was rich you know she was well off her husband was a you know a obstetrician and making money he drives a convertible she's got a car they got a living maid uh, they got a big house um but she wanted to do this and um he didn't like it so it's typical really but it's of its time and and of its time it's a really fun quirky movie on to what I read. Um, the first book I finished this week, I only finished two books, I read this. This is Judy Garland, A Life in Pictures by Basil Nestor. It's one of the few books I didn't have so I ordered it. And as you can see it's not very big, not very big at all, um, and it's got lots of nice photographs of Judy and her films, concerts and so on. It's not a brilliant overview, it's a very very basic overview but I thought I'd buy it just so that I've got in my collection because I do like to get as many books as I can on the stars I like to follow. Sorry my phone's vibrating. The second book I finished I've been reading for a very long time and that is M.P. Priestley's uh, Jack the Ripper One Autumn in Whitechapel. Now this took me about a month to read as you can see it's quite dense, quite a thick book and there's a lot of information in it. He starts prior to the canonical five which is Annie Chapman, goes back a bit to some murders that were took place before that could have been Jack the Ripper but they're not 100% sure and it goes on beyond the Mary Jane Kelly uh, killer uh, killing onto some other killings that happened which again had similar motives and MOs to, um, to the to the canonical five as they're called. Um, he comes up with a suspect and he makes a very plausible um, argument as to why he could be the Ripper. Um, it's it's got some nice illustrations in it luckily of maps mostly there's not a lot of gory pictures in there there are a few but not too many I thought it was very well written there's a lot of stuff in here about other things that were going on in the United Kingdom murder wise um, as well at the same time which made gave it good context that it wasn't just Jack the Ripper going around killing people there were other murders going on in the UK at that time it's just obviously Jack the Ripper was the most notorious it talks about the letters and the only letter writer that was ever convicted of writing those letters as well is, is in here which I read about in uh, Letters from Hell this is a book I would recommend you pick up if you're into Jack the Ripper and you can get hold of it I ordered mine from the Ripper World website which is ripperworld.net and my copy is signed because it's come directly from the author which is really cool I really do recommend it it is a great book um, there is another new book coming out that I need to pre-order because it's one of the ones from Mango and they do limited runs called Photos from the Abyss I thought something like that anyway uh, and it's another one by Andrew Firth who did Ripperland which is a, another brilliant book so that one is a, absolutely recommended on to what I'm currently reading. The first thing I am currently reading on my Kindle, which I'm reading on my phone app, I'm reading a book called Jack the Ripper's House by Amy Cross. So this is a supernatural thriller set in the house that allegedly Jack the Ripper lived in. Um, she goes along with the Ripper being a surgeon, but not in the way that it's related to the royals. 
basically the surgeon's wife Catherine is dying she's got cancer and she's dying and he's killing these women and taking their organs because he thinks he can transplant them in and cure her um, until the end, in the end she kills herself because she can't cope with any more of these operations he's doing and it flits between the present day and the 1880s and we meet this girl named Maddie who's run away from home we don't know why um, it's not explained as far as I'm aware at the moment they haven't gone into it she doesn't want to go back she is underage but there's now a killer stalking the streets of London in the modern day who is copying the Jack of Ripper killers and I, it's a supernatural thriller so it's obviously the ghost of the real Jack the Ripper somehow transcend in time and I think Maddie is the link. Um, I'm not, I'm about halfway through it yet, I'm really enjoying it, it's very very good, it's very very descriptive and it's a good and interesting take on, on the Jack the Ripper crimes. Uh, then I'm currently also reading Cary Grant The Light Touch by Lionel Godfrey, this is a very old book, this came out before he died I believe uh, yeah 1981 so this is before Cary Grant died in the late 80s um, I think he died around 86 or something like that 86. yeah I think so um, so it's not going to be a full biography it's not your normal salacious gossip ridden biography it just tells the basic facts as as they're known at this point 1981 um, there are other books that go into the salacious rumours that cannot be substantiated one way or the other and um, the thing about Cary Grant is he got better looking the older he got and even when at his like in the in his 80s and his 80s he was still gorgeous it's it's just true let's see if I can find some older pictures of him I mean there he is I mean he is still gorgeous and he's one of those actors he got better with age he retired in 1966 um, but Cary Grant is from my hometown of Bristol, so I'm, I'm, I'm interested in I've seen a few of his films, not, not nearly enough, I'll know that, I'll admit that, but I have seen a few of his films, I need to do that. Because he's from Bristol, I feel a sort of affinity with him, and I want to know more about him. Now, my dad, when he was out with his first wife, back in the, uh, would have been the 60s, early 60s, actually saw Cary Grant with his mother at Lewis's, they used to have a rooftop restaurant up there, or cafeteria, he was out with his, his then wife. Mary and um, she went oh look there's Cary Grant and my dad looked at him and he looked at my dad and my dad smiled and nodded and Cary Grant smiled and nodded back because my dad's not the sort of person to go up and ask for autographs. Some other people did not long after but I think Gary Grant appreciated being recognised without the whole fan thing going on of oh can I have your autograph and all that nonsense and can, it's for this person not this and you know um, but yeah that's my Cary Grant story so There is something special about that man. So there are uh, books that go into saying he was homosexual. They, t that happens with every single actor from the classic period. Um, and he may well have been bisexual, I don't know. I wasn't there, I wasn't a part of his life, uh, so I don't know. And frankly, I don't care. If he was, he was. It's, that's his business, not mine. Um, but he once said, uh, but if he would ever write his autobiography, he said, no, biographies are best written by others. Although they'll probably have me have me out as a, as a homosexual. He said they'll probably turn me into a homosexual. And that's what he said, or something along those lines. But it's a really interesting book. It's a nice overview of his life. For me, the most interesting parts of the story about his mother, because his mother, his father had his mother committed to a mental institution when he was a young boy, and he grew up not even knowing she was there. He thought she died. And it was only after his father's death that she found he found out that she was still alive. And they got her released from uh, the asylum or the mental hospital she was in in Bristol in fish ponds I believe they said it was and she lived a relatively independent life for the rest of her life the chances are there was nothing wrong with her when she was committed and this is the thing you could commit somebody for any number of things back in those days she might have had a slight depression or you know a slight breakdown not not enough to warrant her being put away like that at all and the person that suffered the most because of it was Cary Grant because he never had his mother's love and I think that's why he had uh, problems forming relationships later in life as it happened he did become very close to his mother when he discovered she was alive and he always would come home to visit her to Bristol so obviously there's a lot of controversy about him during second world war because war broke out just as he was becoming an American citizen and he was Called being a traitor and all that but he'd actually started that ball rolling long before World War II came out and uh, it's true that some of his films that he made during the war period um, he was a 
independent actor commanding fees of around $100,000 and there was two or three films that he made which he donated his entire salary, his entire fee to the British War Relief Fund. Um, which was, you know, which was good of him. I mean, he didn't have to, but that's his. That was his way of helping. He was always sending food parcels back home to his mother Elsie and so on. Uh, so I'm looking forward to finishing that one. I've got one of the more salacious Cary Grant biographies, which I will read because I do like to to read as much as I can. And the other book I'm hoping to finish this week. I certainly will finish Cary Grant because I said I'd lend it to my mum. Uh, I want to finish this big book on Judy Garland, which I've had sitting on my bedside table for a long time. This is Judy Garland, A Portrait in Art and Anecdote by John Fricke. He's got two other books out, which I've got both of, A Legendary Film Career and his very first one, which was World's Greatest Entertainer, which I remember buying when I was back in college a long time ago. So this is a huge tome on Judy Garland. John Fricke's also done a lot of books on Wizard of Oz. And it's got gorgeous photographs of her got film posters and programs and it's just full it's a very heavy book and this book wouldn't take me long to read because normally because if there's not a huge amount of text in it there's enough uh, but it's an overview and it's mostly about the photographs but because it's so big and heavy it's very very hard to um to do it now after those if I can get through those I've just got to find it because it's on the floor there are a few other books I want to read. Now, I had this one from my brother for my birthday, Letters from Hollywood. So I am hoping to get started on this soon, but I do have a couple of other books I've started reading and haven't finished. One's on Mae West and another's on Rudolph Valentino. So, I'm, um, you know, it's, I've got those three that I'm going to be going, but I really want to get started on Letters from Hollywood. I've heard this is really, really good. And I love the cover. It's got letters from all sorts of stars. So it'll be very interesting, I think. Just a to see what's in there. So that is what I've been up to this week, reading, watching and listening to. Um, don't know what it'll be next week. Um, hopefully we'll be able to do another one of those videos, tell you what I think about the rest of the other books I've read and what I'm starting to listen to or read. I have listened to some other things. We listened to some doo-wop in the car from the 50s and we listened to some 60s stuff last night out in the garden on the new boombox and that was nice but um, yeah, that's all that's all if you want me to continue doing these videos just leave me a comment down below i'm quite happy to tell you what i'm reading and to recommend some books to you especially if you're interested in hold hollywood if you're interested in me doing a hollywood book tour a uh, bookshelf tour um once i've sorted out my books and got them into a better sort of order which will hopefully be in the next couple of weeks to go let me know down below because i can also film one of those because i've got quite a few hollywood books not as many as some but i'm happy to do a bookshelf tour this will not be including anything relating to Marilyn Monroe, which i've done a separate tour on a few years ago and um, I'll link it down below if I remember. If not, it is in the weekly vlog. I don't really fancy doing the Marilyn bookshelf tour. There's three books, there's three and a half, two and a half bookcases full of books and it's growing. So <laughs> I'd have to do it again at some point. But that's it for now. I hope you've enjoyed this little impromptu video and I'll see you again soon. Bye.